Well, hello everyone and welcome to a sunny Surrey today where we are going to be looking at how to plant a tree. Now this can apply to shrubs as well. And before we continue, I'll just say if you haven't subscribed already, do subscribe to the channel. It does help and of course it helps you guys get all of this free content which uh, obviously I put a lot of time into filming and editing and making for you and hopefully at the end of the day it creates a lot more habitat so feel free to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss a single video every time I upload a video to YouTube which I try my best to do once a week. So without further ado I want to address uh, what might seem like, uh, excuse the background noise by the way, some, uh, some fence erecting going on over in another property on the other side of this one. So apologies if there's a bit of noise, but uh, while the sun's shining, it's the afternoon, I wanted to show you guys just how to plant a tree or shrub. Now this might seem like a very, very logical explanation, or you might think it's very easy to do. However, there are right and wrong ways uh, to plant a tree or a shrub. So uh, firstly, I want to address what is the difference between um, a bare root plant and a potted or container plant. Now, a bare root plant, as you might imagine, means that the tree or shrub has no soil on it, and that is when the tree is in its dormancy, these are available between November and March. Now, if you're looking to buy any native trees or shrubs uh, or hedging plants, anything like that, then do check out the wildyourgarden.com website where we do have an extensive variety of, uh, or the extensive list, if you like, of certain species that you can get that you will find throughout the UK. Everything from um, hazel, hornbeam, beech, uh, privet, you name it, <laughs> it's all on the website. So go check out wildyourgarden.com. I'll put a link in the description below uh, where you can buy bare root. And as I say, it's only between November and March when these plants are available. The rest of the year, obviously, when they're growing, uh, they are in a potted form, which um, sadly we're not offering at the moment, but uh, stay tuned to the channel. Uh, and stay on the wildyourgarden.com website. We may be offering those before too much longer. Fingers crossed. However, today we're looking at bare root specimens. It's now uh, the end of January, so it's a perfect time to be planting these trees uh, and shrubs, anything bare root, like I say, up until the end of March, when after that it gets a little bit warm uh, for everything to, uh, to try and establish, and they can therefore then obviously require a lot of water to get established if they are bare root and they don't have the soil around them. So, I have here with me today, I'll stick that at the camera so you can see, one times bare root silver birch, which is probably uh, my joint favorite garden tree along with the rowan, which you can see in this row behind me here, uh, I've just been planting a row of older uh, silver birch and rowan uh, on the top of this bank, which was part of some meadow works that I've created about uh, three quarters of an acre here in Surrey. So uh, stay tuned to the channel. I will be putting a video on the channel of how I made this meadow uh, in videos to come, hopefully in the not too distant future. But I thought it would be nice to sort of cap off uh, the project by adding some uh, species diversity to the site. And that is by um, adding these silver birch, rowan and alder, which are great trees for a back garden. And you can coppice all three as well. And if you haven't seen my recent coppicing video on the channel, do check that out. It's uh, it's pretty pretty uh, extensive as to how and why you should be coppicing uh, native shrubs and the benefits it can have for wildlife. Uh, and there's a big hazel coppice all the way along this side of the meadow that is existing that I'll put a clip in uh, now, which, uh, yeah, is a really nice stand of hazel. And they can, it does massively extend the life of a tree or shrub by coppicing it. I'm not saying you should do it to all trees, um, particularly not older trees, things like uh, silver birch and rowan won't take very kindly to it as they get older. So birch, rowan, alder, fantastic trees for wildlife in your own garden. Check out the channel. I have uh, recently published a video on the silver birch and the benefits for wildlife as well. Uh, so do check that out. But today we're planting this birch uh, along with the others, about nine or 10 trees that have gone in along the top of this bank. Generally speaking, I tend to space trees three meters, three to five meters apart, depending on the spread and depending on the sort of the crown density that you're after. Birch, obviously a very kind of, uh, quite a, an upright tree, so you can plant them fairly close together. Um, trees such as oaks, obviously beech, a hornbeam, 
uh, you know, they obviously require a lot bigger spread and, and obviously left to their own devices, they can they can sometimes have a 20 to 30 meter spread, which is uh, quite astonishing. So, uh, but yes, these are gonna be planted about three meters apart. So the first thing we need to look at is how to dig your hole. So as you can see, the soil has been knocked off these uh, roots, which obviously makes them uh, more efficient to ship and obviously cheaper. So it's a really good time of year to be looking to do this. So uh, uh, obviously it saves you some money as well if you're looking at a big planting scheme. So I know roughly where I want my tree and that's roughly where the spade is. So I'm gonna start by digging the hole. Now, the first thing I'll say is a hole should be square. Holes are uh, better to, uh, as a square shape rather than a circle because just like you can get in containerized plants, quite often uh, the roots can just go round and round and round. And obviously if you've got squares, you've got corners where the roots can poke through and extend into the ground around it as they spread uh, and as the tree matures. So the square hole is always best. So I'm gonna get on and dig the hole now. So start by marking your hole. Better to be bigger than you need. and keep the soil and just chop it up a bit as you go and that will make it easier for backfilling once the tree's in the ground. So that's the hole dug to where I think it will be deep enough. So the next best thing is to check with the tree to see if it is. Yeah, I'm happy with that. That looks pretty good. So the next thing I'll say is it's important to actually chop up the bottom of the hole before you put your tree in because that just loosens the soil. If you've got roots going on top of really hard baked soil, clay or stony ground, obviously they're gonna to struggle to really penetrate through uh, to get their roots down. So by chopping up the bottom, it just gives them a head start and enables the roots to develop uh, into the ground rather than stay flat and go horizontally, which of course can, can cause problems if the tree gets bigger um, as it may not be anchored as well into the ground. So I'm gonna chop the bottom up now. So that's about ready for the tree. Now, what I would say is when you come to plant your tree, you want to be thinking about two things. One is which way round you want it to face. Where does it look best? Depending on whether it's going um, facing into the garden, away from the garden. You know, if you've got a flat face of a tree or shrub, put it against the wall if it's going near a wall um, and have the branches coming outwards. You don't want all the nice growth in the nice side of the tree growing into a building. Um, and also, even if you're not growing against the side of a building, uh, you know, get it so that it looks best from where you're going to most likely see the tree. So from your back kitchen window or, or living room window, um, just to turn it in the right direction. Now, one or two of the trees behind me were actually a little bit bent, but you'll find obviously when they are very young, uh, and I prefer to plant trees when they are younger because they have more vigor and they can take to um, any soil type, pretty much a lot of the native trees better than obviously um, older trees which have been so used to being growing uh, in a pot and being nourished and that you know you can put them in some rubbish ground and they sort of go you know what the hell is this <laughs> I'm not growing in that and actually I've done many tests over the years and I've found that that trees that have gone in even as two foot whips but particularly three to four five foot even six foot specimens um, have actually outcompeted and outgrown 
15, 16, 18 foot trees when they've been planted because they just kind of sit there and sulk for a few years uh, and quite often they don't take unless they've got lots of lots of nutrient around them, lots of compost and you know so I tend to prefer to plant small and you'll reap the rewards a lot quicker. Now birch trees in particular are fantastic as a, a species because they grow very quickly, um, one of the quickest growing trees to establish in your garden and you can expect these to get to 20 foot from about 4 or 5 foot within 4 or 5 growing seasons so you're not waiting 10 to 15 or even 20 years for something like an oak tree. It's a very very good tree for establishing in your garden. Uh, so not only the kind of orientation of the tree, so which way you want it to face, but also the height. This is probably the most critical point, the height in which the tree goes back into the ground. Now what I tend to find is that wherever the tree has, has been grown, whatever uh, plant medium it's been in, you'll always see a kind of a natural darker level on the tree itself. So uh, you can see here, uh, it's kind of a roundabout here. Now what you don't want is obviously you think something going in the ground that high and having you know, roots and everything poking out the top. That's not going to be any good for the tree. It's not the level it's been used to being grown at. So make sure all the roots are covered in the ground and it is kind of where it is. Also, if you go too deep, you know, and the soil level comes up here, for example, um, it can actually kind of rot the bottom of the tree as well. So uh, it's best to go in exactly where the tree has been used to being grown. So, so get in your hole, make sure you've got enough space for the roots, which this one has, and that your top of your tree is uh, not higher than the highest point of your ground. So I just want that to turn the other way actually. There we go. Well, that's nice. Now all the machines have stopped. There's a house being built over the way and uh, some fencing going up over there. So yeah, apologies for the noise guys, but um, hopefully you can hear me all right. Certainly now anyway. So then when you've got your tree, uh, you can actually do this with your foot. Just kind of kick the soil back in I mean, just before this point, you can add some compost if the ground is really, really naff, if it's really clay. Obviously, you know, the more nutritional value you can give the tree in its establishment, the quicker it's going to establish. I'm not worried about it here because it's a lovely kind of sandy loam that I'm planting into. And actually I'm on a bank that I've created from all the meadow work. So there's about, well, 18 inches of turf and then a good foot of uh, topsoil on top. So yeah, this tree couldn't be going into a better piece of ground. So it doesn't need any compost, but you can add, of course, add compost. But please, please, please use peat-free compost if you can. Our peat bogs are vanishing at an alarming rate, which is um, a detriment to all our dragonflies, damselflies, many, many species. So peat bog habitat um, is declining. So we really need to use peat-free compost. So please, if you're going to use some, do use that. Um, so yes, so you can add it at that point, just underneath and around the, the um, uh, tree as you as you go put in the soil back in but also you can mix it in with the soil before you put it back in the hole as well so I'm going to carry on with my spade now and just pull the soil back in now you might be thinking oh that's great nice and easy job done we're not quite finished yet the most important part probably of all now is to give it a really good healing in with the back of your boot because that makes good contact with the soil and the root which then enables the, the roots to be able to draw moisture out of the soil. If you've got a root you know, and you've got a pocket of air around the root obviously it's going to really struggle to, to draw the nutrients it needs to feed all the fresh growth uh, come another two or three months when this thing starts growing again. So make sure it is well compacted and I'll show you now how I do it, literally with the heel, a good squashing in. So you know there's good compaction. At this point as well, you can kind of tease the tree to, you know, if the tree is leaning one way or another, uh, you can move the tree, push down one side to straighten it. You know, and at this point you can stand back, have a look, once it's leaning that way a little bit. There we go, I'm happy with that. And then, just get a bit of loose soil back on top. What you don't want is too much of a depression, so you're gonna have lots of water sat uh, on top of the roots through the winter because that can, of course, not be a great benefit to a lot of trees. Things like older, they're fine because they love it wet, but other species prefer it just to be moist but not saturated. Okay, 
trees in the ground and honestly I can't think of a better feeling than knowing that you're planting a tree. It's just a wonderful, wonderful feeling. Uh, the same with plants actually, anything to be honest, <laughs> uh, particularly if it's plants around a, a pond, obviously I do a lot of wildlife ponds, um, but trees, shrubs, there's something very, very, very satisfying um, knowing that you are planting something that's going to give back oxygen into the world. Really great feeling. So. Uh, now we just need to make sure because it's a slightly exposed site, the, the tree isn't going to rock around too much because too much of that in, the time, in time can obviously open up a gap at the base of the tree. And I've seen many trees in my uh, landscaping and uh, tree career where there are big gaps around the base of the trees, which has caused their death early on because uh, obviously in the winter, it's what's known as wind rock. Um, you know, you, you make a cavity around the trunk frost can get in and get to the roots and it's just it can be um, very bad for the tree so make sure you are staked and tied if you're in a back garden setting a lot of the time trees this size this one's probably about four four and a half foot you don't need to worry about a stake there if they're fairly sheltered but this is quite an open site so uh, i'm going to put a stake in now so um, i'll show you how we do that So what I've got here is a little sort of, well, just over an inch stake, as you can see, um, around about three or four foot long. Now, when you're staking any tree, you don't really want it to come above uh, sort of a third to a half of the tree, just because then the tree becomes too dependent on the stake. And these stakes only need to be in for the first year, 18 months after that, they must be taken out. Otherwise the tree can become too dependent on the stake and I've seen it where uh, trees have actually failed and blown over after four or five years because they're too reliant upon a stake, particularly a thicker stake, you know, like a, a two to three inch round stake. Uh, obviously they don't then develop the root structure because they are too uh, reliant upon the stakes themselves um, for, for bracing. So as soon as you take that stake away, uh, they can blow over. So um, don't keep your stakes in for too long, guys. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna put this one in the ground now. It's best to put your stake usually on the side of the tree that the prevailing winds are coming from. So let's say the prevailing winds here are coming from the southwest. I'm going to stick my stake on the southwest side because that way it stops the tree from blowing too far that way. Um, obviously, if you put it on the north side, uh, the tree is going to blow into the stake and it doesn't really do it any, any good or support the tree at all. So within three or four inches, careful not to damage the roots as best you can. Uh, and then just uh, obviously it's a bit of soft ground here. So we can push that in as far as we physically can, about there. And then, I mean, you can use a sledgehammer for this. This is what's known as a bonker in the industry, which is a hollow tube with handles either side, which is used for putting uh, stakes and fence posts in the ground. So a great piece of kit, but you don't have to use this. This is really kind of too big for these posts. So I'm just gonna use the flat side on the top uh, just to knock it down a bit. Uh, be careful when you're doing this not to damage the tree itself so if you can get someone to help you um, hold the stake away after a few knocks just check that your stake isn't going in at a real angle one way or another just to make sure it's nice and plumb which that about is and then I'm just gonna gently put my foot in there so I don't hit the stake. I hit the tree, sorry. Now what you're really looking for when you're putting the stake in the ground, because you're gonna or going to attach the tree to the stake, you want a little tie, which is I'll show you, try not to fall down the bank. Uh, just a little tie, tree tie. You can get these from your garden centre. Uh, and they just kind of go in one end and then go through and then back on themselves so they uh, yeah, stay nice and nice and tight. But you want to branch lower down that you can actually wrap the tie around so that the tie doesn't then just slide down the pole and drop to the bottom of the, bottom of the tree. So I've got a couple of branches here for options.
So I've just threaded that back through on itself. And as you can see, it just stops the tree from blowing too far that way. And there you have it. That is one times tree planted. Whoa. <laughs> um, one times tree, come up to the top of the bank, I think, planted and what a great feeling that is. So I really hope this video has inspired you guys to get out there, get planting some trees. By all means, if you don't have the room, you can still make pots for pollinators uh, and check out on the video from last year. Um, I did a, a video on how to plant a pot for pollinators bit of a mouthful uh, but the sort of plants you can put in pots so if you've only got a balcony in a city garden or anything like that you can still help our invertebrates which of course need all the help they can get at the moment so I really hope you've enjoyed the video guys please subscribe to the channel uh, it really means a lot to me and uh, click the notification bell and like the video of course if you've enjoyed it and uh, drop some comments below if you've got any questions I'll do my very best to answer them and of course bring you lots more uh, content on on the channel as to how you can help wildlife in your own gardens uh, and hopefully some of the flora and fauna that I find throughout the rest of this year as and when I find it and it starts coming to life which it is doing now um, obviously snowdrops are now coming out you know spring is just about peeping its head up so uh, yes absolutely great time to be around in the world I think and um, thank you very much guys for the support really appreciate it and I'll see you all on the next video cheers mm -hmm.